ready. Somebody stand up and give God a shout of praise right here. Let go, let go, let go, let go. Is anybody going to say yes to Jesus tonight? Let's go. Somebody rock one time with us and like this. Let's go. Imagination. The next generation is here.
go wherever the Lord sends you. Come on, you can do better than that. Make some noise for your amazing praise and worship team. Woo! That's a banger. They said they wrote that. Amen. Don't let me steal it, okay? I'm excited to be here. Can you make some noise for Jesus if you love him tonight? Come on, you can do better than that. I said for Jesus. You can do better than that. I didn't say for me. I didn't say for you. I said for Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so excited to be here with you, Evangel. Can you help me make some noise for your leaders real quick? You should already be in motion. Come on, you can do better than that. You can do better than that. Oh, it's turn to your neighbor and say, do you know that the man of God? Turn to your neighbor and say, do you know that the man of God? Y'all, y'all saying a little slow. So find somebody else that'll talk a little loud, got a little hood come out of them. Do you know that the man of God goes home with you on his mind? We ought to do some better celebrating than that. Make some noise for Reverend Dr. Pastor Apostle <laughs> Lockett. God bless you. And of course, to my sister, y'all took her from us. To your leading lady, Lady Lockett. God bless you, Lady Lockett. Isn't she so gracious? She's so sweet, she's so kind, and she dresses so well. And to your beautiful first daughter. Hi, Mama. Hi, Mama, Mama. One of your besties is here, Chloe Drew. Hi, money, money, mop, mop. Oh, look at both of they bows. <laughs> I celebrate. Um, I celebrate my friends because it's it's rare to have down to earth leaders and who love the Lord and who are trying to live like something, and also to be a billboard of the kingdom or the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I celebrate leaders who are living epistles, and I also celebrate the founding lady. Uh, Lady Lockett. God bless you, Mom. God bless you, Mom. You can do better than that, y'all. She's always so kind and always so loving. And um, I just feel like I'm at home when I'm, when I come. Thank you, Mom. I feel like I'm at home. And then to, to Big Sis, too. I love you, sister. Make some noise. <laughs> to Pastor Joshua Lockett and yeah, come on, come on, come on. God bless you. And of course to um, Elder Keith Cooper, the youth pastor. Woo, 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 woo. I love that. Turn your neighbor and say, we got some good leaders, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't look at my itinerary, so that's why I look like this is the church of God in Christ. And so I decided to keep on my flip-flops because y'all chilling. Is it all right if I chill with y'all tonight? Okay, let's go to the Word of God. I have a task. I have an assignment, and I don't take advantage um, of this great opportunity. And I, um, I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. Can Yeah, thank you. Can somebody shout you love me too? Y'all make me nervous. Y'all make me nervous. So encourage me. Encourage me tonight. Um, but I'm excited to go before the throne of grace, but also to bring this word to you. Uh, let's go to Jonah. It's a very familiar scripture story. Hallelujah. God is good, isn't he? I'm going to pray first, then I'm going to read the scripture. Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you that you've allowed me to have this moment to come back home to family and to give a word, Father, that I believe that you gave to me on the plane for your people. And so today, God, I ask, Lord, that you just cleanse me from any unrighteousness, remove any distractions, Father, and allow me to go forward in your, your will, be in alignment with you, God. Let your power, your spirit move in this room. Continue to move. You're already here. But God, take us to another level. Devil, Father, and allow us to leave this room not wanting to uh, go back to where we've come from. And we give the glory all the praise. Let it be a relevant word, Father, a word that will stick. And God, I thank you, God, 
Anoint me, Father. Anoint my speech. Anoint my mind. And let the revelation flow like a river. And we give you the glory, all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody holla out. Amen. Okay, let's go to, y'all can sit down because I, I'm kicking it. I can kick it with the young folk. Is that all right? So let's go to Jonah 1 and 3. We're going to read a few scriptures. Is that okay tonight? A few scriptures. Let me start my timer so I won't be no long-winded preacher. Amen. All right. Um, I started on my scripture. Okay, let's go to Jonah 1, and we'll read verses 1 through 3. Then we'll jump down a few times. Then we'll go to the chapter, uh, Jonah 3, excuse me. Okay? And it says, tell me when you got it. Say, I got it. Okay, I know you got it on the screen, but if you can't, just write it in your phone or something, too. <laughs> uh, let's go to Jonah. Okay, here we go. It says, now the word of Jehovah came unto Jonah, the son of, I don't know how to pronounce this word, but is it Amittai? Okay, Amittai, thank you. Amittai, I was having a struggle. I forgot to look it up. But Amittai saying, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come upon or come up before me. There's a different translation that I wanted to read. Let me go to that. Y'all with me? Okay. Let me go to my phone. Okay. Yes, this is what I want. Okay, it says Nineveh, it says go to Nineveh, the big city. I have heard about the people uh, doing many evil things. The people, they're doing that there. Turn to your neighbor and say they doing stuff, they doing stuff. They got a lot of stuff going on. Then it says, so go there and tell them to stop doing such evil things. Turn to your neighbor and say, stop it. I want y'all to help me preach this tonight. And then it goes to the third verse. Let's go to the third verse. And then in the third verse, it says, but Jonah tried to run away from the Lord. Uh-oh, there it is right there. And then it says, he went to Joppa and found a boat that was going to the faraway city of Tarshish. Jonah paid money for the trip, and he boarded the plane. Turn to the neighbor and say, don't board that flight. Don't board that flight. And then it says, he wanted to travel with the people on the boat to Tarshish to run away from the Lord. Now let's jump down to the fourth verse. It says, but the Lord brought a great storm on the sea. The wind made the sea very rough. It says the storm was very strong and the boat was ready to break apart. Huh? The boat was ready to break apart. Okay, let's go to the fifth verse, the 15th verse, excuse me. Let's go to the 15th verse. And then it says, so the men threw Jonah into the sea. The storm stopped and the sea became calm. Turn to your neighbor and say, you ain't causing all this drama, is you? Okay, let's go to the 17th verse. We, is it all right if we do a quick Bible study, y'all? And then it says in the 17th verse, when Jonah fell into the sea, the Lord chose a very big fish to swallow Jonah. He was in the stomach of the fish for three days and three nights. All right, now let's jump down to Jonah 3, 1 through 2. And then it says, then the Lord spoke to Jonah again. Can y'all highlight again? Somebody yell out, again. again. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah again and said, go to the big city Nineveh and say what I tell you. I dare you to just turn to find, find somebody else new and say, can you hear me now? So I know, I know that a lot of us may remember this, can you hear me now phrase from the Verizon commercial. Y'all remember it? If you do, just kind of wave your hand, wave your hand, okay. So we remember this phrase uh, in Verizon, they built this question and they said, can you hear me now? That guy, I did some research, his name was Paul, uh, which is very ironic, but his name was Paul. And whether he was in the desert, the valley, the city, the suburb, a tropical place, or even in the middle of a river, this guy, Paul, found himself in hard to reach places and for me this seemed very similar to where Jonah was so I did some research too and what I learned is Verizon sales there they increased significantly after the company had launched by using this campaign can you hear me now this was in 20 2002. But in the first year of the campaign, one of the things that I learned is that Verizon's net customer grew by 10% to 32.5 million. And in the second year, it grew by another 15% to 37.5 million. So why are you sharing this information with me, Kiera? Okay. The reason I'm, at, I'm sharing this information is because even Verizon knew the significance and the value of being connected. 
So I hope that you would write this down because what I'm learning is that uh, as long as I am in hard to reach places, because some of us have gone through some things. Some of us have made some choices. Some of us have been around some people. And I just said last Sunday, some of us don't even realize that our circles are our cages. And so we lose connectivity. And so one of the things that the Lord has been dealing with me on, and if I can be honest and transparent, I've been sharing my testimony, but just a couple months or a week, a uh, month ago, a couple weeks ago, I was very angry. And I found myself in a space of whether or not, wondering of whether or not God heard me in my anger. We know that Bible says, sin not. If you're going to be angry, don't let the sun go down on that. Turn your neighbor and say, don't let the sun go down on that. And so what I found myself in was a hard to reach place because I felt even disconnected with myself because I couldn't figure out why I was being so angry. Why was I so angry to where I couldn't get over this situation and let it go? So one of the things that I noted here, though, is that you may find yourself in places that you never thought that you would be in. I don't know if it's somebody in the room where it's like, I never thought that I would do something like that. I never thought that I would react to it like that. But some things start coming out and the Lord will start dealing with us, showing us this is why I'm pushing you, I'm pressing you, I'm pushing an ooze out or I'm pushing, pushing out some infection. So I dare you to turn to your neighbor and say, I need you to go through the process. Go, to the, go through the process. So one of the things too that I noted here is the Lord gave Jonah direction and said, they are clowning over there. I need you to go over there and tell them to put it together. When Jonah went and he saw the Lord have mercy on them, this reminded me of myself. If you read more about the story uh, or about Jonah, you'll find that Jonah became angry and disappointed with the Lord showing his people mercy. Have you ever been in a situation where you said, Lord, I need you to get them back. We think vengeance is mine means that the Lord's going to be on your side and gonna, he's going to bully them. No, I still have to be a father to even my children. So one of the things that the Lord dealt with me on is, Kiara, what place are you in that you would want my wrath, my retaliation to affect people who have affected you? When at the end of the day, the whole point of us being in the earth as young children, as teenagers, as young adults, as seasoned saints, the whole point is so that we can hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. And so one of the things that I saw while the Lord was dealing with me was it's not so much a, 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 me being able to hear, but where is my heart concerning life in general? Have I lost sight? Do I just come to church just to make it a habit? Do I just come to church because I'm supposed to, because I have a responsibility there? Or am I going to the church house to really be fed so that I can be spiritually a and in alignment with the Lord so that I am a walking revival. And so one of the Lord's ha one of the things the Lord had me to see and remember is when I was younger, I never forgot this moment. This was when I was about 13 or 14. And the Lord gave me a, a, a dream. And in that dream, I was sitting on the pew um, in our church on, um, out, it's off of Southfield Road. Y'all wouldn't know that, it's Greensboro. But anyways, it's off of the freeway. And I was sitting in this service and there was a witch who was holding her hand over my mouth and I woke up and I told my mother about this dream and I said mommy it scared the oh it pulled something out of me today it scared the life out of me because I felt like I couldn't even say anything or move in my sleep I know that the culture has defined these things as sleep paralysis but what really are we going through and that's what the Lord had me to see Kiera there's an anointing on your life there are some things that you're going to go through that is different than the average young person because there's a call, there's an assignment on your life. So what are you doing? Where are you going? Because I kind of went left, but I'm bringing it back to where Jonah was. Jonah was this man who the Lord had called and given an assignment and he wanted to do any and everything to run away from what he knew God was calling him to do. So I don't know who's in the room where you have friends that make you feel uncomfortable, but one of the things too that I noticed, it is not not that, it's not so much that there are friends or people who strongly dislike you. It's more so that there's a spirit of darkness in them who knows that they once had the same chance that you had, which is God's grace. And they're so angry with you to where now they look at you. You have the audacity to go back and forth and run away from the presence of God when I'm stuck the way I am. So I don't know who's in the room where you need to be 
reminded. I'm not fussing at you. I'm not yelling at you. But you need to be reminded of God's grace. He called you. He called us. And we kept running. So I want to encourage somebody one more time, one more time to know that even Jonah, while he was in the boat, he went to a hard to reach place. The Bible says that he went to the bottom of the boat while everybody up there trying to figure out what is this storm that's going on around us. Jonah went down to the bottom of the boat and slept while there was dysfunction happening. There are so many of us who have become immune to dysfunction all because I want to become numb or I want to not hear what God is calling me to do in this moment. There's an assignment. There is purpose that is calling you. Maybe you feel like I don't want to serve on a ministerial staff. I don't want to have this gift of seeing, but I see things in the spiritual realm. And sometimes I don't want to tell my friends or my friend. I had a struggle the other day and I couldn't tell my friend that this boyfriend was not for her. And what rested on my conscience was that once upon a time she saw me in my dirty places. And so the enemy tried to use this against me and had it on my conscience to where I couldn't deliver the word that the Lord was giving me to share with my friend. So one of the things that I noticed with Jonah is while Jonah was in the bottom of the boat, everybody is trying to figure out what's going on on this boat and who do we need to correct or kick off because it's calling, causing us havoc, it's causing us chaos, and we need to figure out what we need to do so that we don't die. And what that I noticed, what I noticed is that they went to Jonah, they casted lots, and Jonah knew that it's the God that I serve that's shaking your boat because I'm the answer. I don't know who's in this room who needs to know, but you are the answer. You're the moment we've all been waiting for. And the enemy wants you to believe that you're too young to be that anointed. But I declare in this room that there is a prophetic gift on whoever the male, the king, the lady, the young woman. There is a gift on your life. And the enemy wants you to think that you are not the answer. I don't care if it's dysfunction. I don't care if it's a generational habit. But I want you to know and I want you to believe that you are the answer. I'm sorry if it feels like I'm yelling. But one of the things, too, that I noticed the Lord was dealing with me is that I kept praying for everything else to happen. Everything else. I said, Lord, this is my prayer list. I give this to you. Can you do this? Can you do that? These things weren't happening for me. And I know a lot of us probably have heard something like this before. But I, can, I know it for a fact. The Lord gave it to me because I was coming to preach a sermon called Apply the Pressure. But the Lord said, dude, can you hear me now? And I said, well, what scripture will I go to? He said, use Jonah. I said, Lord, can you hear me now? It's so outdated. I don't want to say this to these young people. But even in that moment, he reminded me, you're doing it again. You're countering we. You're countering what I'm telling you to do in this moment, even while I'm telling you to go and tell them to get out of it and to walk in their authority, walk in your confidence. It doesn't matter what they've seen you do. The gift and the anointing and the power that rests on your life, they will not be able to negate that God's hand is on your life. The prophetic gift that you have. I don't know who it is I'm talking to, but God's going to anoint you with a level of accuracy of where they cannot deny that it is God. When you open your mouth to sing a song, they will not be able to deny that it is God. When you open your mouth just to read a scripture, they will not be able to deny that it is God. I don't care if they saw you a few years ago, cut somebody out, fight real good, take a blood, take a drink. Maybe you were all over the place. Maybe you had your share. Maybe you shared too many secrets. But I come to declare in this room and to the young people in this room that you are the generation that God is rising up. You are strong. You are young, but you are bold. You are not ashamed. I dare you to lift your hands and say, yes, Lord. He 
said, can you hear me now? So I had you to yell out the part in the scripture of where he said again. That word again means that I called you before, but you didn't do what I asked when I called the first time. And so I don't know, again, who I'm talking to today, but I come to tell you that you can definitely cancel every thought from the accuser of the brethren. The Bible says that he is set out to make you feel guilty. As long as you walk around with guilt, you'll feel too shame to deliver what God has called you to do. I dare you to turn to your neighbor and say, but we're going to get this thing. So y'all, I'm done. But that was all the Lord sent me here to say. And I wondered, I wondered, I said, Lord, I feel late. I, sometimes I wonder if it's still my thing to do. What do you want me to do? But he said, Kiara, that's the word that I want you to give. I kept researching. I kept studying. I even looked for more scriptures. And the Lord said, just give them Jonah. And the word of the Lord said to me, get out of the well. He told me to tell you to get out of the belly of the well. He said, I'm ready to set you free, but I'm going to carry you to the land that I've called you to deliver. So I don't know. I don't know if you're 12 or 13, but the Lord is saying that your family will be delivered because of a choice that you will make by the obedience of Jesus Christ. So I'm moving, I'm moving. I'm getting out of the way.